Yesterday, I posted this chart on LinkedIn and I had quite a few people in the comments asking me to create a tutorial about how I created this chart. So that is what this lesson is. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this chart has an official name. That was the question I was asking on LinkedIn, but I guess you could call it a variation of a dumbbell chart or as somebody suggested, a connected dot chart. I really like that one. Now, I originally saw this chart on The Economist website. And not only did I think it was a really cool chart, but I also really liked the data set that they'd used because it's very relevant for what's going on right now in Europe. And that is the Euros tournament. It's coming home, it's coming home, it's coming home. I think we all know that it's not. Regardless, we might not be able to win at the football, but we can definitely win when we're creating our Excel charts. So let's dive into the lesson. and I'm going to show you exactly how I created this chart. Now, the first thing to know about this particular chart is that it's a combination chart. And that means that it combines a bar chart with a scatter plot chart. And we also have quite a bit of formatting, some manipulation and some formulas in there as well. So this is a really fun chart to create, if you like creating charts, that is. But it all starts with the data. And you can see here that I have the top 10 teams win probability in the Euros tournament. And I will say that this was a snapshot taken before the tournament and after the first round. And we have data here for the top 10 countries and the probability that they're going to make it into the last 16, the quarterfinals, the semifinals, the final, and if they're going to win the entire tournament. And this is the information that we want to plot on the chart. Now, if we just jump back and review the actual chart so we can break this down and understand what we're doing. Now, as I mentioned, this is a combination of two charts, a bar chart and a scatter plot chart. So if you look at this chart, you can see we have these gray bars in the background. That's actually the bar chart. And then the scatter plot is where we have the dots. And each dot represents one of the categories above and it's plotted in the correct position due to its X and Y axis values. So let's start out by building the structure of this chart before we even think about getting the data in there. Now, in order to do this successfully, I've got some helper columns. So let's just unhide those because the first thing we need to do here is create that bar chart with the gray bars that are at 100% width. So in this percent column, I'm going to type in 100%. And we're just going to copy this down. So now that we have those values in that column, we can create a bar chart that shows the team and this 100% value for each team. So let's select the team column, hold down control and select the percent column. We're going to go to the insert tab and then in the charts group just here, we want to click the drop down next to 2D column because this is where we're going to find our bar charts as well. So let's choose this one and we'll drag it across. Now, before we go any further, we need to make some formatting changes because what you'll notice when you create things like bar charts is that the categories are reversed. In this case, the teams. So if you take a look in the table, you can see it goes France, Spain, Netherlands, England. But in the actual chart, it starts from the bottom, Denmark, Croatia, Germany, Italy. Now, you might be happy with it like that, so that's fine. If you do want to reverse these, it's a simple case of selecting the vertical axes. And you can either right click your mouse and go into Format Axes, or you can simply press Control 1 and it's going to pop open that Format Axes pane on the right hand side. So we're going to the axes options category and underneath this heading right at the bottom here, notice we have a checkbox categories in reverse order. This is the puppy we want to click. So let's select it and you can see immediately it switches those around. So they now look the same as they do in the table. However, when you do reverse the categories, you're going to find that it will also move that horizontal axis to the top. And again, if you don't want this, all you need to do is from the same area in your former axis pane, underneath horizontal axis crosses, you want to set it to at maximum category. And that's going to drag it back down to the bottom. 
Now, another thing that you'll notice about this chart is that the horizontal axis goes from 0% to 120%. And we only have values in this chart up to 100%. So we have this kind of weird space at the end. And Excel tends to do that. It gives us a little breathing room. However, we want these bars to run all the way across. So we need to make a change here. Let's click on the horizontal axes, go to our axes options and expand axes options. And notice here at the top, we have bounds, minimum and maximum. So this is what controls what you're seeing on that horizontal axis. And you can see currently it's set to zero that represents 0% and 1.2, which is 120%. So I'm fine with zero, that can stay as it is, but we want to change this to 100%, not 120. So instead of 1.2, we just need one in there or 1.0, hit enter, and it's going to adjust those bars. So we're looking good so far. Now, another thing I'm gonna do a quick formatting change. So I'm just going to delete these vertical grid lines because we don't really need those. Now, when it comes to making selections in your chart, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, particularly with things like grid lines. Now, if you struggle to click in the right spot to make your selection, a way to make this a lot easier is just to go to the format tab, and then in the current selection group at the beginning, if you click the drop down, this will list all of the elements in your chart and you can choose which one you want to select. So I'm going to say grid lines. You can see that they've been selected in the chart and then we can simply press delete. Now, another thing I'm going to do is make these bars a little bit wider because they're, they're really skinny at the moment, unlike me. So let's click on the bars. If you've still got your format data series pane open, just go across to your axis options and we need to adjust the gap width because when you increase the width or height of the bars, you're effectively just decreasing the gap width in between the bars. So it's not actually the bar that you're resizing, it's the width in between. So I'm gonna change this to 80% and let's format them up on the format ribbon shape fill. I'm going to make these a light gray color. So I'm pretty happy with that basic structure. Now, the next thing to do is just to get some data in this chart, because if we don't add a second series in, then we can't actually overlay the scatter plot on top of this bar chart. So I'm going to grab one of these columns of data. It doesn't really matter which one you do at this stage because this is just temporary. So let's grab the last 16, control C. And then if you click on the chart and control V, it's actually just going to paste that data in as a new series. And you can see it's created another bar. It's this orange bar just here. Now, do we want to display this as another bar? No, we don't. It needs to be a dot. So this is where we can click on the series, right click and go to change series chart type. Now, when the change series chart type window or dialog box, I should say, opens up, notice that it's jumped me straight down to combo chart. And this is exactly where we need to be because check it out. We're currently displaying those percentage values, the 100% that we have in that column as the clustered bar. That's absolutely fine. However, the last 16 data that I've just added is also showing as a clustered bar. We don't want it to show as a bar. We want it to show as a scatter plot. So let's scroll down and choose X, Y scatter and click on OK. And what you'll see is that we have a lone dot on the chart. How cute. He doesn't have any buddies. That's going to change very soon. Now, remember, this is just temporary at the moment, just so we could do this step of changing it to a combo chart and incorporating a scatter plot. So before we start adding his friends, all the other dots, we need to make a couple of changes to this secondary axis that we now have up here, because notice it's currently showing in percentage. And we don't actually want that for this example. So let's select it, go across to axis options, expand number and we're going to change it to number and I'm just going to give it one decimal place so it looks like that. Now you're probably thinking to yourself why on earth is she doing this? Where is this going? Well this secondary axis is really important because this helps us define our y axis values. So you have to remember when you're dealing with these little dots 
you basically need to give them coordinates. So it has to have an X position, which tells the dot where it needs to be horizontally, but you also need a Y position so it knows how far up vertically it needs to go. And this is where this secondary axis comes into play. Now, currently the numbers that you see in this secondary axis don't really mean anything. So let's sort those out. Now, for this particular chart, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to take a look at how many teams I have. So if we highlight everything, notice the count in the status bar is 10. So I'm going to double it. So my first Y axis value I'm going to say is 20. And then I'm going to go down by two each time. So the next one is going to be 18. Now you can just type in the first two and then you can actually use your fill handle because Excel is going to pick up the pattern. Now the values I'm using for my Y axes won't necessarily be the same for you. It really depends on the type of data that you're plotting. But if you understand the principle behind why I'm doing this, which should become clear in a moment, then it's going to be a lot easier for you to work out your own. So now I have these Y axis values in here. The top one is 20. So I'm going to go back to my secondary axes and where we have maximum, I'm going to change this to 20. And you can see now we have an axis that runs from zero to 20. Now, I also want to add in the missing points in this category axis because we're going down by two each time. It misses out 19, 17, 15, but I actually want to show those. So we can do that by adjusting the units underneath. So currently the major units have a step value of two at the moment. So if we change this to one, you can see it's going to add in all of those other points. Now, a reason why I've done this this way is because this is really going to help me tell the dot where it needs to be vertically, because I want these dots to appear in the dead center of these gray bars. So now if you take a look at this, you can see that 19 is actually in the dead center, 17 is in the dead center, 15, so on and so forth. So based on this, I'm going to modify my Y axis values to reflect that. So we're going to do 19, 17, and then I'm going to copy these down. So now when we start to plot our data, the dot should be in exactly the correct position, both horizontally and vertically. So let's add in some data. So let's click on the chart. So we're going to go to right click and we're going to choose select data. Now, if you recall, we added in that last 16, that lonely little dot in the corner. And I said, it's just a temporary measure to get something into the chart. So we're going to edit the last 16 and we're going to make some changes here. So the series name, let's click the last 16 label. So this is the cell that contains the word last 16. The X values are going to be the last 16 values and our Y values, this tells it where it needs to be vertically are going to be these values just here. And check out what happens. Can you see, I now have that first series of dots. So he's no longer on his own. That makes me happy. And they're exactly in the correct position, both on the Y axis and the X axis. So let's click on OK. Let's add the next series. So the series name this time is quarterfinals. The X values are these ones just here. And the Y values are these ones just here. And you can see as I'm doing this, it's building our little dot plots. So fun. So let's select these and the Y axis values. Click on OK. Add. This time we want the final. These are my X values, Y values. And then the last one is win. X values and Y values. Click on OK and OK again. Now, to me, this looks so pretty. I absolutely love it. But of course, we're not finished because whilst my little orange dot now has some buddies, none of them are connected. They might be buddies, but they're not good friends. Now, the way that we connect these dots is by utilizing error bars, but we need to do a bit of a calculation to work out how long the line that's going to connect these dots needs to be. So if we take a look at, let's use France as our example at the top here. The orange point is the highest percentage value and the green dot is the lowest percentage value. And that is true of all of these different countries. So in order to calculate 
the length of the line that we need, I basically need to do the maximum value minus the minimum value. So in this column here, where we have bar difference, I'm going to do max of this range. And we're going to minus the min of the same range. Close the bracket, hit enter, and then we can copy this down. Now, if you're wondering why we're getting a little green triangle in the corner, which normally means some kind of error or a warning, if we click the little warning triangle, you can see it's just telling me that, that the formula emits adjacent cells. So it's recognizing that I'm using a formula that includes these cells, but not this one just here. So it's just telling me, hey, did you want to include this one? Did you forget? It's sort of like Excel's version of Clippy, always there with some helpful advice. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter. So we can just simply ignore that error. So now that we have these values, we should be able to add in our line. So what we need to do here is click on this first orange series. So the one in the top most right corner. And then we can go to the plus next to our chart because we want to add in error bars. Now, when you add these, they're going to look a little bit crazy because it's going to try and add vertical and horizontal error bars. Now, we don't need the vertical ones, so we can literally click on them or click on one of them. It's going to select them all and we can press delete. The only ones we're interested in are the horizontal error bars. And these remind me of those little spaceship things in Star Wars. That's what they look like. Now we need to make some adjustments to them because they're, they're not looking their best. So let's select the error bars and notice in the format pane, we now have all of our options for formatting our error bars. So we need to make a couple of changes just here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to say minus. Now, what does that do? If I click away, it basically means that we no longer have two of these little black lines on either side. We just have one which is perfect. Let's make sure we select them again. I also want to say no cap. That makes it just a line. It removes that little vertical line. And now this is the part where we specify how long that line needs to be. So in error amount at the bottom, we're going to click on custom and specify value. Now in both the positive and the negative error value field, we just want to add in our bar difference. So I'm going to delete these out and we're just going to add these values for both of those. Click on OK. And like magic, we have a connected dot plot slash dumbbell chart. I think this looks so pretty. Final couple of things to do here just to tidy this up a bit is we don't really need this secondary axis anymore. So we can just delete that out keep our chart looking nice and clean. And then of course we could add things like a title, so on and so forth. And you can see on the completed version that I've done of this particular chart, I've added in a little key at the top, just so you know what represents win, final, semi-finals, and also just a title. And for the title, I've actually inserted a text box and I've linked it to cell A1. If you take a look in the formula bar, it's referencing cell A1, and that is why you can see that same title text in the text box. And by linking in that way, it means that if this title was to change, the chart title is also going to update. And of course, this whole chart is completely dynamic. Now, if you take a closer look at the values for France, as somebody pointed out to me yesterday on LinkedIn, there's only four dots as opposed to five. Now, that is because when I was fiddling around with the data set, I accidentally changed the semi-finals value for France, which you can see here, to the same as the final, which means it's hiding behind another dot. So let's change that to 62. And you should see there it is. There's the dot back again. So this chart is completely dynamic and it will update as you change things. So if we change France's win to 5%, you can see that top green dot has just slid along. So what do you guys think? Do you like the connected dot plot dumbbell chart? I think this is a really nice, clean looking chart that's easy to understand. And putting this together really gives you a great chance to practice some of those lesser known Excel charting skills. As always, let me know down in the comments, subscribe, share, follow, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time.